I'm curious, you don't like the dollar, you don't like the Federal Reserve and other paper fiat currencies. What do you think about Bitcoin, the virtual currency that's not backed by governments or central banks? Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. It's a, a little bit too complicated. If it's complicated to understand, and I've been studying money for a long time, if I can't put it in my pocket, I have some <laughs> reservations about that. But it's been designed in the free market, and if it's a means of exchange, it would not ever be illegal, and you shouldn't regulate it in the free market. But I don't think it fits the definition of money, which has been around for about 6,000 years. People want to see something. They can know what it is. They can define it. They can touch it. They can put it in their pocket. And a Bitcoin, if you don't, uh, Bitcoin, if you don't have a computer and somebody running the computer and the calculations, uh, you know, so you, you don't have it. So I, I, I am not, uh, I, I'm not a big supporter of that, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. And I admit I don't so, fully understand exactly what's going on. So you're sticking to it. the hard stuff. <laughs> just wondering if you're looking at this price drop in gold as a buying opportunity. I know you also have your own portfolio of gold. Oh, yeah, this is the time people buy. I mean, if you look at it these last few weeks, there were some pictures in the paper that were astounding. I think it was in Thailand or someplace. It was a, it was a jewelry gold shop, and they were lined up six rows deep, hundreds of hundred people buying. They run, they're running out of silver coins right now. I bought, you know, recently, too, because uh, I don't like to buy when there's a lot of energy, you know, with uh, pushing them up. I want to see a correction. So, yeah. Yes, the people who believe it is, and this is very healthy for the economy because the speculators, the people who are in it and trading from minute to minute, they're weak holders of gold. They don't believe in gold, but they believe in helping to set the market and they, they have a function to play. But the people who really believe in it uh, are buying now and uh, literally the uh, it was in the commodities markets that sh right. shook this thing out it wasn't in the hard assets there was one person that dumped <laughs> 53,000 contracts in one in one sale right. so there's some uh, fin finagling going on there I believe oh yeah the speculative play all right well dr. Paul you are a believer always opinionated we want you to stay <laughs> with us from Clute Texas today for your thoughts on a potential historic fix to our nation's immigration laws and gun control on Market Makers on Bloomberg Television. Back in two. In Washington right now, there is intense renewed debate over a proposed overhaul of our nation's immigration system. After the Boston Marathon bombings in which the suspects were Chechen immigrants, some members of Congress say proposed legislation needs another look. Ron Paul back with us here on Market Makers, the former congressman from Texas, presidential hopeful. Do you think, Dr. Paul, this tragedy is an opportunity to fix our immigration system? Well, there's always an opportunity because there's a need for it, but I don't think they're going to solve any problems at all uh, because they're too big and they're very complicated. They are very much involved with economics. I don't think you can deal with immigration unless you deal with the welfare state, both that welfare incentive for some people here not to work and a, an incentive for others to come and get some uh, free services. And also, uh, I, I think it's to, uh, more important that we look at our work permit, letting people come in and work and put aside this idea of how we're going to give automatic citizenship. That becomes a political football because everybody's lining up. Who's going to get the votes? Some One side says, oh, we're going to get all the votes. We want them all to be legalized. But I think that you have to deal with an economic policy and uh, really open up the uh, opportunities for people to come back and forth and, and to work, but not to insist that uh, everybody's going to become a citizen because I don't think that's going to work under these cir circumstances. Dr. Paul, I want to ask you about what's happening in the GOP right now. Your son, Rand Paul, the senator from Kentucky, uh, made himself even more famous than he already was with that fantastic filibuster, I mean, impressive at the very least, over the issue of drones. He has an opportunity to galvanize the Republican Party. But the old guard, with the help of people like Karl Rove, appears to be circling the wagons and trying to keep the Tea Party out. How's it going to end? <laughs> Well, with a weakened uh, Republican Party, uh, 
because, you know, uh, we did fairly well in the presidential campaign. We had a lot of delegates and they were excluded from the convention. And uh, the rules have been written so that, that makes it even worse for anybody to challenge the status quo. The people who have been in charge, they don't want their party to be broken up. So when the young people want to come in, they resist it. And it was the young people that uh, were supporting me and my campaign to the tune of millions of people very interested. But nobody comes and says, well, how can we get... The Republicans don't come and ask me how we can get the young people interested because I'd want them to change foreign policy. I'd want them to change economic policy. I'd want them to balance the budget. And I'd want to have them talk about the Fed. And the establishment in both parties aren't interested in talking about any of those issues. The young people are. But if there's no solidarity inside the Republican Party, Dr. Paul, how on earth does it win the next election? Well, I think the solidarity is the same problem in Democrat parties and the Republican Party. It's ongoing. There's always factions. And, of course, uh, I want to unify everybody in the, in the belief in the cause of liberty, sound money, balanced budget, the Constitution. So I would say, yes, uh, there's a good way to unify them. But t for unity, for the sake of unity, makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, why should everybody give up on their beliefs? But, uh, yes, the old, the old guard uh, are losing their way. The party is getting smaller. It is splintered. And they will have to face up to the fact that if they talk about limited government and personal liberties, they have to, you, you know, actually believe in it and do something about it because the young people won't be fooled. And, and if, if this continues, the party will become smaller. So quickly, do you think your son should run for president in 2016, as he perhaps has hinted? No, you'll have to ask him. I have no idea what he wants to do.